Growing up in the bush in Australia, it had its ups and downs. I guess one of the things I remember was it was difficult to get access to new music. And basically, we didn't have like televisions or a newspaper. We'd have this dude, John Butler, not the musician, but this guy. They nicknamed him Johnny Butter because he used to cover himself in margarine to get a better tan while he was doing his news run. Hear ye, hear ye, it's second time for the news, ma. Telling you about the latest music, the latest news from outside of the bush and... He'd have to sing the songs for us so we wouldn't get to actually hear the recorded songs or see the video clips or anything. He'd have to sort of mime out the video clip and sing along. So say Kylie Minogue just released a piece. He'd be like, can't get you out of my head, mate. Can't get you out of my head, mate. I remember when the Pantera Cowboys from Hell came out. It was like, I'm a Cowboys from Hell. It's my first introduction to heavy metal. It wasn't the most ideal way to learn about the outside world. This guy had total control over the town. For example, there was this dude, Jaden Smart. Johnny Butter had made up this theme song. Every time he walked past his house, he'd be like, Jaden Smart. <laughs> smart, smart. <laughs> Jaden, oh, smart. Smart, smart. <laughs> Well, the song got really catchy and Jaden hated it. It was really annoying for him. He'd turn up at school and, you know, Johnny Butters would have connections with the principal. So the principal would sing it over the intercom before Bell went. Jaden, smart. Smart, smart. The kids would join him. Jaden, smart. Smart, smart. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, Jaden had had enough and he turned up to the school and killed the principal and Johnny Butters with um, a single hit of a Windsor Smith. It's quite an expensive shoe he had. He became principal of the school. He'd just hold up the shoe at the start of the day. Copper Windsor Smith to the head and you'll be feeling it, mate. So it was lucky for me. I was actually Jaden's only friend before all this happened and he looked after me. When we were older, he had lots of connections with the music scene in the Big Smoke and he used to take me up to the Big Smoke for concerts and stuff. Cars are fucking Sigma, a fucking good band, they fucking good band, my a pretty fucking good band. You'll have to meet the band, wouldn't you, little Mr. Timmy, hey? You'll have to meet the band. One night when Mike Patton was in town, he took us up to the Rialto building in the city, went to this like secret bar where all the big shots go and play poker. Bar managers all like, <laughs> get the fucking who's who of the Big Smoke up here. <laughs> the whole place was full of big shots. You had like Jason Donovan, Margaret Thatcher, Newton, the Pet Shop Boys, Criss Cross, just chilling out, eating prawn, Lucius Boric from was doing a drum solo. I saw the tennis player Andrew Agassi and went and said hi and he said, no, it's Andre. I uh, got embarrassed, went to the toilet and cried for five minutes. I see Mike Patton, he's in the corner, he's trying to have a conversation with the Dalai Lama. Jane Smart. Getting right up in his face, asking all these really annoying questions. Like, What'd you have for breakfast, Mike? What's your favourite film? What colour you like? What's your favourite colour, Mike? Huh? Where are you from, Mike? What's your favourite band? Bear McKinnon rushes up, he's like, hey, Tim, uh, your friend's being a bit of a punisher. Uh, you might want to go grab him, he's just being a bit of a punisher. Anyway, it didn't matter. After about 20 minutes of being punished, Patton finally snaps and he just turns around and he's like, Look, fuck off. Get the fuck out of my fucking face. Jaden burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> he ran down the street and Mike Patton's running after him, kept yelling. Get out the fuck out of my face. Couldn't get away from him. He's like, <laughs> All of a sudden he whips out his Windsor Smith and forces us all into a maxi cab. Has the driver at Smith Point and tells him to get us to a music shop. Gives the windows at Alan's Music a Smithy Dog, forces us in and makes us have a jam for him while he sits there eating prawns. What a day, what a day.